Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. And next to me is an extremely special car. It's an S-Type R and not special just because these things are rare in and of themselves, especially in specs like this, but because this one is probably the lowest mileage one certainly I've ever seen listed for sale but anywhere in the UK. More on that later, but that's not really why I'm here. The reason I'm here is, well, I don't tend to review other people's cars that often, but my friend Christian at Helan Tow Cars has this one for sale and thought of me. He's had a few S-Types over the years and he's been following closely my S-Type experience and he thought I might like to try this one out to see really if it's worth thinking about upgrading. Now this particular S-Type R is extra, extra special because, well, it's a Japanese import, but it has less than 50,000 miles on the clock. It's also probably the nicest specification I've ever seen in my life and one that I would certainly choose myself. A dark green paintwork with gorgeous contrasting black over caramel leather seats inside and just plenty of wood veneer too. This one's also just got beautiful paintwork, recently had the wheels refurbished which look magnificent and it's absolutely stunning. What I find more interesting though is that under the bonnet it has the 4.2 litre supercharged engine which was later in the Range Rovers from around 2005 they put the 4.2 litre supercharged in that car and also the Range Rover Sports amongst a few other things but it produces around 390 horsepower around 400 pound feet of torque and of course therefore is a far cry from what I used to in my naturally aspirated V8 Jaguar S-Type which only has around 275 odd horsepower so no doubt given the extra power the bigger wheels the wider profile tires suspension and everything else they did with this car I think it's going to feel entirely different from my S-Type question being and the whole purpose of this video though really is for me to come down and experience this and well find out for myself whether I should still be very happy with my S-Type or I should really be thinking about upgrading is this car as good as everyone seems to say it is or is it in fact just a steaming pile of turd So immediately jumping into this S-Type R, it genuinely feels really well put together. Now, of course, a lot of the time in this video, I'm gonna be comparing it to my much older 1999 S-Type, which obviously is, is far more wallowy and less stiff in comparison, but this thing does feel genuinely really tight. For me, it's missing that wooden steering wheel, but actually when you throw it into the corners a little bit, the handling and this wheel to hold on to is much more reassuring. The brakes are really good actually, very, very responsive, and the pedal has a really lovely feel. All in all, straight away, this thing just feels really spot on. I've still got all my creature comforts, I've got my heated seats, it's all electric, the steering wheel you can adjust electronically, as you can the seats, and as with all S-Type R's, we have the bigger navigation display, which does of course still show its age, but is a slight upgrade from what I have in my earlier 99 model. I have to say the switch gear in here though, the buttons feel cheaper and less, I don't know, less independent than the ones in, in my car. They just feel a bit more run of the mill and, and off the shelf. In terms of the engine, you can sense that there's a lot of power there because, well I've not gone above 2000 RPM, I've barely moved my foot on the accelerator yet we're still threading around these country roads very, very comfortably. When you push the accelerator pedal past 10% or so, you get a very deliberate growl from the engine and those exhausts at the back, and you can feel it start to surge you forwards. It becomes quite easy in this car to pick up pace without really knowing because it's so comfortable, you're so nicely cocooned in your seat and like I say, you're really not having to do much to the throttle to get those speeds up at all. Now, if we're to engage the sport mode here, I'm gonna select second gear. We're at 30 miles per hour, and I'm gonna put my foot down on this dry piece of road. Here we go, you ready? <laughs> oh, wow, that supercharger wine is addictive. And I have to say, the acceleration isn't as brutal or as scary as I expected. Actually, I don't think it feels that much faster than my S-Type. 
does sound a whole lot better though. So you join me here in the back of the Jag. I don't think I've sat here since I spent 24 hours living in it. If you haven't seen that video, go and click up here. But anyway, I just want to take this moment to say a very big thank you to Y-Food for once again sponsoring the channel. Now I have spoken about Y-Food several times before and I'm still speaking about them because they are fantastic. Y-Food make these wonderfully colorful meal replacement drinks which are both high in fiber, high in protein and are very, very accessible to a wide range of people, whether you be gluten intolerant or vegan, there's a selection of drinks and bars for every single one of you. Now these meal replacement drinks are particularly handy for someone like me that's always on the move, whether I'm doing long endurance challenges in the car or running around in a field somewhere trying to get shots because they can last and give you the nutrients that you need for three to five hours. So whether you are like me and running around fields, taking pictures of cars, or you're in a very busy office environment, you have a very short or quick commute and you need to eat during that, well, these could be really, really handy for you because you can have these instead. So there's a crazy amount of flavors for you to choose from. Just go on the website and have a look at what you could have. I always come back to this though, the happy banana flavor has to be my favorite. I think I just love the bottle, but it's absolutely delicious and they last for up to 12 months. They don't need to be refrigerated either, which is really great if you're on the move and there's just always one in the bottom of your rucksack. So if you want to know more about Y Food or just even browse their range of products and perhaps see which flavor you would like, then use the description down below to go over to their website. And if you fancy making an order, then there should be a code on screen now. Details will also be below and you can use that code to get yourself a nice little discount. Don't forget this could make a really nice gift for someone as well, whether it's their birthday or just you want to send someone something nice. This could be a really, really lovely thing to do. Anyway, thanks again to Waifu for sponsoring this video. They've been such fantastic supporters of this channel and it's all the more better because they're a really great product too. Thanks again and let's get back to the video. <laughs> yeah, it's really not intimidating. I guess if you've got a V6 or a V8 S-Type, maybe the 4.2 or one like mine, you're not going to need to worry about the extra power in this. It's nowhere near as scary or as intimidating as I thought. Even today where the temperatures, I mean, probably closer to zero than I would like and the roads aren't completely dry, it manages to put that power down so well. I guess largely that's to do with the weight of the car, but I certainly expected it to be a little bit more leery and skittish. And I'm not complaining actually, because the S-Type is very suited to being a cruiser. Think of it more as a BMW 7 Series with a lot of power. This, the way it's set up, feels stiffer, but it's still very comfortable to drive. And actually the fact that it's not scary to drive fast, I really like. This is essentially Britain's ultimate autobahn cruiser of the day. It will sit at 155 miles per hour all day long and it will get there very, very quickly, but not so quickly that you sort of have to put your face back together once you reach it. And now, as we drive around the gorgeous town of Finchingfield, lots of you seem to know it, it's beautiful here. This S-Type just fits in perfectly to the untrained eye. It doesn't look intimidating, it doesn't look boisterous, it doesn't look as bow. It looks like a older gentleman's Sunday pride and joy. But what I wasn't expecting with this car is it to do the S-type stuff as well as it does. I thought that big supercharger would just completely compromise its comfort and its ability to be a comfortable, understated cruiser. But that couldn't be further from the truth. It still does that stupendously well. I really have to say as well, these seats are sublime. Oh look, there's an S-Type. Let's give them a flash. <laughs> we got a wave. These seats are absolutely brilliant. Really, really supportive. They're really, I'm not moving at all on these sort of twisties, but so comfortable. My back, I can never find a comfortable seat for my back, but these uh, uh, are brilliant. I've been driving around for a little while now. 
back feels absolutely fine. Very, very comfortable. So these S-Type R's, they command a pretty serious premium on top of something like mine. You might pay two, three, four thousand for a really good one. These you're looking at a minimum of five or six for something higher mileage. Now higher mileage is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's probably twice as much at least than your sort of equivalent V8 or V6 S-Type. And is it worth the extra cash? Well, I think it depends what you want. If you're the sort of person that wants to drive around in the ultimate of a certain car, then this is definitely worth having because it does everything just a bit better with a thumping supercharged V8 under the bonnet as well. But I have to say, when you drive around Finching Field at very civilized and nominal speeds, uh, to be totally honest, you could be in a, a V6, dare I say it, a 2.7 litre, diesel S-Type, you, you don't really know until you sort of get out of town and hear that whine from the supercharger. By buying an S-Type R, you're also joining a pretty exclusive club. Not many of these cars were made at the time and there's certainly not that many around now, especially not ones in as fine example as this. So as the sun sets on this fantastic afternoon drive in the S-Type R, as someone who owns an S-Type and has grown to, to love the S-Type as a platform, would I spend the extra cash and, and get an S-Type R? Well, in short, the answer to that has to be yes. When you think about it, you can get a really nice one of these for less than £10,000. And at the time, this was poised against the E39 M5. Now, try and find one of them for less than £10,000. I really have to say as well, this car is 2003, it's 20 years old now, it's 2023. And it feels every bit as new as one of those press cars I get. It does not show its age whatsoever. So let me say a huge thank you to Christian at Heel & Toe Cars for allowing me to come and drive this car today. Now, if you have a taste in cars that's even remotely similar to mine. Uh, well, actually, I encourage you not to go and follow Christian on Instagram because literally it's gonna bankrupt you. Every single car he gets into stock is like my dream spec. He just, I don't know, his taste is impeccable. So do go and check him out on Instagram. I'll leave the link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you very, very soon. Should we just listen to that supercharger wine one more time?